Hi, everybody. John Halde here, and I am delighted to have Joe Bowler with me and Andrew Martens from Assured Partners. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Thanks, John, for having us again. Yep. Thanks, um, thanks John. Today, part three of our series on insurance for TSPs. Part one was physical damage, liability, and non-trucking liability, right? Mm -hmm. Part two was all about workers' comp. Yep. Both phenomenal videos full of information. If you haven't seen part one or two, I recommend you watch them. Today, part three, we're going to talk about how does a TSP shop for insurance, right? How do they shop for it and how should they? How should they shop for Okay, it? so what do they actually do and what should they do? Better okay. hygiene? Yep. A uh, couple ground rules I want to make sure so I don't ask questions I shouldn't. This is not about why they should use Assured, right? Well, that's obvious, but no, uh, yeah, no, this is not, um, yeah, the, the, the way we're trying to educate this, John, is it's a tough topic with those ground rules, but yes, we're adhering to those ground rules. This is not to say that, hey, this is all about assured partners and you should, you know, we're the only ones that do this and you should only work with us. That's that's not the point. Matter of fact, um, when I spoke about this at the Lion Hall Summit in Texas, my competitors were in the room and I actually bounced some things off of them to help um, kind of go along with um, and reinforce the point that we're making here on how to shop for your insurance. So and it holds true in, in what we want to get into today. Awesome. And we're not going to offer opinions on other brokers or carriers, right? right. No. Yeah. Okie doke. I'm in your capable hands. Um, once again, if you assume I'm an idiot, then you are on target, but I'm going to have a lot of questions. Yeah, let me uh, let me share my screen. And I like to always get my little red highlighter, so bear with me. Okie doke. You guys see my red moving around? Yep. Okay. So, John, this is one that I'll just tell you, our society has done a terrible, terrible job educating business owners um, on how to shop for your insurance. Everybody has seen, I'm going to, I will pick on a few brokers and, and insurance carriers, but they have nothing to do with FedEx. So everybody's seen the commercial with the Geico. What's the, the general? Um, who's on the general? Is it Shaquille O'Neal? And, you know, on the commercials and you've got flow from Progressive and, you know, bundle everybody talks about bundle or 15 minutes can save you 15 percent or more you know all these things and um it, it's just we're inundated with you know you just go out to all these carriers and you get all these quotes and that's the best thing to do and 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 you know get as many quotes as you can in your insurance and our society you know tells us to do that all the time but when it comes to business insurance that's really the last thing that you want to do. It, it really hurts you. So I'll try and go through this and, and keep it high level and, and simple for everybody who's watching us to follow. Um, and, and this is a common thing that we see in our industry all the time. So I, I think maybe to start, people need to understand there's, we like, okay, so we're assured partners. We are an insurance broker right? We are not the insurance company. Um, some of our competitors who are at the Line Hall Summit, uh, CIA Insurance, uh, Paradiso Insurance, right? They are not an insurance company. They're also insurance brokers, just like us, right? And, and a broker represents multiple insurance companies, right? So a broker is who you go to, to access those other insurance markets, to get quotes from them and you rely on your broker to use their best judgment on which insurance company should they go to, which insurance company should they not go to based on geographical location or your losses or competitiveness, what have you, okay? And so what ends up happening is a lot of contractors, not all of them, but vast majority of them, is they they have it because we've been taught this from society is they say, well, my insurance is coming up for renewal in a few months and I want to make sure I'm getting the best price. So what do they do? They call three, four, five other brokers and they have all those brokers go and shop their insurance. And that is the biggest mistake that a contractor can make when they're looking at trying to save money on their insurance. And it's a touchy subject because people are always, well, 
we just want to make sure that the carriers is they're being honest and giving us the best price. But here's what happens. Okay. I'm going to start with the with the slide on the right hand side here. Okay. So where it says selected agent, and I'm just going to use us as an you know what I want. Let me use a competitor as an example. Okay, just to show that this isn't about us, John. Uh, let's pretend this is, I don't know, CIA insurance. Okay, they're at the line hall summit too. They're a competitor of ours. You, I love you, them too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Dave they're, Campbell. Yeah, they're good people. Okay. Dave Clayton, Joel Tovey. So let's yep. So let's say that um it's it's Haldi Tech Line Hall. Okay. Okay. And your agent is CIA. They are your selected agent. Okay. And they have you with ABC Insurance Company. Okay. You're coming up for renewal. Your selected agent, when you come up for renewal, they are going to go to insurance company one, insurance company two, insurance company three, and insurance company four. Maybe, maybe because of your losses or where you are, maybe they're only going to go to three companies or they, they know what they're doing, right? There might be a reason they don't go to certain carriers because they just know they're not going to waste their time. They're not even going to be competitive, right? Got it. Okay. Your selected agent, you trust them. And if you like everything that David Campbell and CIA is doing for you, stay with them, right? If we were your agent, you like everything, stay with us. Because what happens is this, let me go to the, this is the biggest mistake. So instead, John, instead of you just going to your agent that you trust, you call three other brokers to shop I, your insurance. I, I got to ask a question because as I'm reading this, if in this example, David sends it to four carriers and says, listen, the one you're with, maybe we can do better. Let's go to four different ones. I'll get you quotes to consider. Yep. Well, four of them are going to give a quote probably. Yes. Okay. So I'll have things to choose from. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is on the left. This is the most common of what we see happen. Okay. So agent one is your, let's just say they're your current agent. Okay. And then you go to two other, and I say agents, we should really call this brokers, okay? This is your current broker. And then on top of your current broker, already trying to do what's on the right-hand side here, now you've got to two other brokers that are all trying to do that same thing, okay? And so here's what happens. Your current broker sent it to insurance company one, but so did broker two and broker three. So insurance company one says, you know what? We're seeing this from multiple brokers. Each broker is giving us a little bit conflicting information here. We're out. We're just not even going to quote. Okay? Conflicting information would be stuff I filled out for the third time on the form and I got tired of it. So I kind of shortcut it on this or they entered it in a computer wrong. And, or maybe somebody they're trying to push their thumb on the scale to make it look better. A bit different payroll. Um, somebody gave a little bit different background on the owner versus the other guy. They're just getting different and they're going, you know what? There's conflicting here. We don't know who to believe. We're out. Okay. Yeah. So right away in the, in this scenario on the left, you've already eliminated one, one insurance company that probably could have been very good, but they're out now. Okay. Both these agents also went to insurance company number two. However, Broker number three was the first one to this insurance company. So that means that these other two agents, they're out. They can't get a quote from this insurance company because this broker got there first. And some companies have a first in policy? All companies. All companies have a first in policy. And this is the, this is John, this is the biggest thing we see. They don't understand that. So if you were to tell me, so I'm assured partners, and let's say you're with CIA, and I called you, John, and, and you said, you know what, Joe, I'm with CIA. I love David Campbell. He does a great job for me. Um, and you say, but I tell you what, you know, I, let's just make sure he's being honest. And you let us look. And, and we snuck in there, and we got to this company before your agent that you just told me that you like him. And now you've eliminated him from going to one of the markets to do his job. Are you following me on that, John? I know if you are, then everyone else will be. That part I'm getting. This is making a ton of sense and the light bulb is going off. Okay. It, most insurers that we come across don't, don't understand. I'm not saying all, 
but a lot of them don't understand that, okay? And there's a few things that happen with that. So let me continue, okay? Company number three, agent one, they were the first one in, okay? Company number four, underwriter's too busy, sees the account as being shopped. So this underwriter says, and this is a common thing we get back from underwriters. So they say, hey, you know what? We know that all you're doing is shopping. And if all you're doing is shopping and blocking markets, our likelihood of writing this account is low. We're just going to step aside. We're, we're not even going to quote. Okay. So by going to multiple, we're not saying don't ever talk to another broker, but we're saying when you go to multiple brokers like that, you're really only hurting yourself. Whereas on the right hand side, if you select your broker first and then let them go to the market, now your broker, how many declined here? Two declined first in. So only one broker is getting a quote here. And it's not even a broker that you currently work with or don't even know that you like. Or did you interview that broker? Or do you know, are they going to provide the same services and everything else that you're getting now? Are they going to look at your experience mods and do forecasting and look at loss ratio analysis and help you reduce claims or help you better manage claims? But yet they're, they're the only ones that are getting a quote from this and they're not even your current broker. You follow where I'm going here on that, John? I, I do. I have a lot of questions, but I'll hold them. Okay. So on the slide on the right, okay, your current agent, they're going to get a quote back from every single one of these companies. Okay. And, and the biggest thing we hear from people is, well, I want to make sure he's being honest. Well, okay, I understand that. But there's also a problem with that. If you don't think your current broker is being honest with you, well, then it's not maybe a problem with what insurance company you're with. It sounds like maybe it's a problem with your broker and you need to have more discussions with him or her, right? Okay. That's a problem. It's, it's no different than, you know, uh, all these guys have attorneys and they have tax accountants. And when tax season comes, you're not sending your taxes out to five other, you know, tax accountants to do your taxes and decide who did the best job. And that's the one you're going with, right? It's you, you really should find a trusted broker, interview the broker first and, and look at what they provide, what kind of analytics. What, not every broker is right for everybody. Sometimes we're too analytical. For some, for some people, as an example, you know, some guys, they don't want to get deep in the weeds on the experience mod or how to reduce it or what the mod's going to look like next year and forecasting. And that's too much for some people. And that's fine. Right. Where other people, it's a, you know, it's a good fit. Um, so the, the best scenario, if you really want to check another broker and markets they have, is what you should do is selected markets then. OK, so let's say this is your current agent and you're with insurance company one currently. OK, I want to skip ahead a couple pages, John. Okay. This is basically this is basically ignore our this is our watermark in the upper right hand corner. We are not an insurance company. I thought we should almost have taken that off. Andrew. These are basically when it comes to workers compensation. These are basically all the main players that you're going to see in the marketplace that are going to quote a FedEx line haul contractor and be competitive. There are thousands more insurance companies, but they're just not in the market market space. These are basically all the players. So you you qualified that for the first time in the conversation. Is what we're talking about just workers comp? Or is that workers comp is the big kahuna on what these guys spend? Work work comps typically the big kahuna. There's a few states where the rates are so low. Sometimes like Texas or Michigan. Texas and Michigan are a couple of the few states where sometimes the work comp is actually less than their auto insurance premium. Um, you, most contractors, that's not the case. Their work comp premium is higher than the auto premium. But the what you were explaining about using a broker and picking a broker well and letting them get multiple quotes that would apply to the liability, the NTL, and the physical damage, or no? Yes, it would apply to that as well. Although when it comes to, as contractors know, there's far less markets in that arena on the auto. Oh, okay. There's fewer. Yes. fewer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. NTL is kind of a, is a unique um, 
coverage that not a lot of carriers do, nor do they want to do, um, because that premium is so low. Um, you know, one one claim turns that company upside down, even if they had a thousand contractors. So, so right. it's few and far between on the NPL side. You're probably dealing with two major players in the in the NTL coverage, along with regional carriers. Yeah. So regional carriers just kind of have um, a section of the country that that they work with. Now, this is a big list. In your previous slide, you had an example where a broker would be going to four insurance companies. Yep. So if you take any broker, are they legally allowed to go to all of them on this slide? No. So we have we have contracts with carriers um, so that we have the ability to write with them. And not every agency has every contract out there. Like just to give you a, a broad, broad stroke on this, there's 25 carriers up here. We deal with 12 of them. Okay. But my question is this, not to ask you which ones, should a TSP be thinking about who are the better carriers and should I limit my broker selection from those who represent them? Or is that beyond the scope of what a TSP really is capable of doing? No, you're no, that's the opposite of what we want them to do. What, what they should, that's your broker's job. Okay. The broker is the one to maintain these relationships based on the amount of business they have with them to know which, which carriers. Yeah. As <laughs> I don't want to get too deep in the weeds because I, I want to get back to the topic I was on. You know, look, um, if broker A does a million dollars a year with insurance company one and broker B does $32 million a year with insurance company one, you tell me, John, who's going to get a better deal from that carrier or who has the most leverage? Okay. You need to interview your broker, right? But do you go in and say, I want to work with insurance carrier one, or is that not expected of a TSP to know which carrier they like. I have many clients that I have with a certain carrier and we do this up for renewal and we get quotes back and they say, you know what, Joe, I know this carrier is five grand less, but I like carrier one so much and the ease of business and the way that they handle claims. It's worth it to me. I'm just going to stay with carrier one. Does that answer your question? Fair. Okay. Okay. So I want to stay on topic here though. If let's say that you are going to, your renewal's coming up, John, and you're not going to just get quotes from your current agent. You want to get one from another broker. Okay. That's fine. But again, you really should be as, as a contractor, if you really want to get the best, if, if your objective is, is to get the best quote back, you need to talk with your current broker and the other broker that you're now going to get quotes from, and you need to discuss markets. OK, you need to have an open discussion with each broker. of What markets are you going to go to? OK, because you I'm going to answer your question, John. I think what you don't want is two brokers. You you don't discuss the markets. And now what happens is it's just a race between us two brokers to try and get to all the markets first so we can get all the quotes. Define market, because I think you're using insurance an insurance carrier. term. Insurance carrier. It means carrier. It doesn't mean my New York work comp versus my California nope. work. No, these are all markets. These are all different insurance markets, right? Okay, gotcha. Now, now it makes sense. Okay, let me let me expand on this then. So this is your current agent or broker. I'm sorry, this is your current insurance broker. You pick another broker, okay? And But you don't talk about who's going to go to which insurance markets, okay? So now it's just a race. Right. With the picture on the left. Now it's just a race. Who can get to all the markets first so that we can so that we can, you know, get quotes from them? And there's a couple of things on that. Why is it a race between us brokers? Well, obviously, because we want business, right? Sure. I mean, we don't do this for free. I mean, right. I, I, I get it. <laughs> we want to we want to get quotes so we can win your business. But also, and this is the biggest, I think, takeaway that contractors need to understand on this. This is the biggest point. When you have multiple brokers and it eliminates a lot of insurance companies between the brokers, very often, I, we just had one, um, oh, where were they? They're out of Georgia 
uh, North Carolina and Virginia. And they, they reached out to us actually. And yeah, we want to get a quote on insurance and okay. So we sent all the applications. We were ready to go out to market. Okay. That's what we call it. So when you asked about well, market, no, we're ready to go out to our insurance carriers. Okay. And so we sent it out to our carriers. And what happened is we went to four carriers and three of them declined. Three of the four carriers declined because there was a prior submission. Some other broker is already in on those carriers. Okay. So now we only have one carrier left to get a quote from one carrier. Okay. And, and this is the point I'm making here is as a contractor, when you're shopping for insurance, what is your objective? Most of the time, John, it's they want the lowest price. Let's face it. Right. That's why you're shopping. And I, I hate that. I hate that word shopping, but that's what they're doing. They want the lowest price. Well, if you approach me, okay, and you want to get a quote from me, but I only have one carrier, what you have just done is you have taken away all of my leverage to work that carrier down to the lowest price that they can get to because I only have one carrier. Whereas, let me just go back to this slide here, John, and this selected agent, and he gets a quote from four insurance companies. This is why you need to interview your agent and make sure that you trust your, your current broker, right? But if he goes and gets four quotes, he doesn't just turn around and go, here's the four quotes. What a broker does is they say, hey, insurance company one, you know what? The insured really likes you. They like the way you handle claims. They like the ease of doing business. But you know what? We've got insurance company three, and they're 10 grand below you. If you want to retain this business, you're going to have to clean up your act here and get that price down. And then we do the same thing with insurance company two and insurance company four and so on is that's what a broker does is we're leveraging and we're working back and forth with our relationships here to get these carriers to where we, the bottom, bottom line that they're going to get to based on the size of your company within your geographical region and based on your losses. Then once all that negotiation is done from your broker, then they show you the results. Here's where everybody came in at, right? But like I said, when you go to multiple and you don't discuss it, you've just taken away the leverage from your current broker and the other broker you went to and the other broker you went to, right? Because it wasn't discussed up front and now it's just a race and you don't know who's got what carrier or where anything is. You're just hoping that what you get back is the lowest quote. But in fact, most of the time when insureds or TSPs do that, they might get back a lower quote, but what they don't know is that had they selected just two and talked about the markets, they might've gotten a back a quote that actually could have been 10, 15, 25% less than the supposed lowest quote that they, they think that they're getting. So let's see if I've connected the dots here. Let me yep. see if I can get the masterclass and put it in action. I'm a TSP. And I work with you guys and I'm looking to shop it to see whether or not as much as I love you, maybe there's somebody like David Clayton, who I love also and see yep. if I can do better. Yep. Would I go to you and say, OK, gentlemen, I need a list of who you market to. And which one's the incumbent that you currently has my policy and right. you give me back 12 of the 25. Right. Then I go to David and I say, who do you market to? And he gives me a list of 10 or 12 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I compare them. Yeah. And I say, oh, there's some overlap here. Yeah. Now I divide that up and I say, of the four overlap, Joe and Andrew, I don't want you qu quoting from these two. And I go to David and I say, you've got these eight or so that's not overlap. And I've carved out these two. You can quote from them, but not these other two that the overlap. Yep. Now there's no first in conflict competing. Then they can give me and work quotes. Is that the right way to do it? That's the, that's the right way to do it. Absolutely. And, and when I call you and say, I want to shop it and I want someone else to shop it, and I ask you to carve up the market like this, are you just throwing things in the office and saying, I never want to work with John Haldy again? Or are you going, hey, he watched my video. He's being smart. This is fair. We'll do what we can and we'll compete on the merits. It's a huge relief. It's a huge relief when insured because, all right, 
They get it. And I now still have leverage to do my job properly. What what hurts us brokers, and I know any other broker that's competitive of ours will agree with this, is when, when it's not discussed and you just go and wait a minute, I'm your current trusted advisor and now I don't have anything. Everything is blocked. I can't do anything other than work on your current carrier and you just took away all of my leverage. See? Got it. So obviously, darn, they're shopping. You hate the term, but understand but they're it. doing it the right way. So mm-hmm. I can still do things. Right. And we might, we might, um, I don't know if argue is the right word. We might say, uh, John, I understand that you're leaning towards wanting to give this specific care to the other broker, but here's how much business we do with them, or here's the kind of pull I have with that carrier. Here's why I really want to work with them. And you know, we say, okay, of this, let me go to the next slide. It of all these 25, yeah, we work with 12 of them. But again, John, based on your business and your geographical area and your history, I'm not going to go to 12. We probably know two or three that we know can be really competitive, right? So it's also not like every time you come up for renewal or any time that we're quoting new business, we don't automatically just go to all those 12. Of those 12, some of them might not write in those states. We also know, and Andrew, I should probably pull up. I mean- You want me to do it? You know where I'm going with those rates, right? Yep. I I was going to say too, underwriters have to do a bunch of work to quote you, right? Yes. And if you blast it to 12 and you keep wasting eight of their times, they're going to get tired of you. And then you're not going to get any leverage. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing. And we haven't even gotten to that yet, John. Okay. You don't want to shop for your insurance every single year, right? If you have one or two brokers that are flooding the market with your business every single year, eventually those companies go, you know what? We see this every year and we never get the business. Why should we work hard on it now? Okay. So when the time comes when you actually need that carrier, hey, you know what? Good luck getting the best price from them, right? And, and that's why you need to interview your brokers and trust in them, right? Listen, if you don't trust them, well, then that's a problem, right? And you've got a, a broker problem, not an insurance company problem, or maybe both, right? Um, so the carriers have some give, but that's going to be dependent on the broker's ability to play them against each other. It's one of the major tools. There's other factors there too with, you know, how pretty of a bow can I wrap up on Hall Tech, even though you had a million dollar claim two years ago, you know, um, you know, and that's just part of, you know, what we do too. And, and let's face it, whether you call it ethical or not, if I do $32 million a year with company A and somebody else only does a million, come on, you know, if you've had a horrible claim experience, I've got a much better chance because the amount of business I do with that carrier to get a quote from them, just the way it is. And that's vice versa too, right? That's not to say that only I do more business. Versus, there's, there's other brokers that do way more business with certain carriers on here than I do. And they probably have, I know they have much better po- buying power with that carrier than I would have. In the business brokerage world, once you get quotes, you're going to make some money on top of that, right? This is not charity work. No. Is the amount you make something you have give on also if you want business or is that regulated? Yeah, uh, with uh, with work comp, it's a little bit regulated. Um, and if you go back and watch the long, excite, super exciting video we did on work comp, uh, it'll explain some of this. <laughs> it's a great video. Don't take away from that. But it was, you know. Actually, um we all keep this on our desk, and I'm sure our competitors do too, is every state has um, rules on how much scheduled credit an insurance carrier can apply. And because they have rules on scheduled credits, that puts a cap on commission reductions. Okay. So we are, let's say your insurance premium, John, is $100,000 a year, and we've got max credits on there. Andrew and I would not be able to go to that carrier and say, hey, take off five points of our uh, commission uh, to get the price lower because the insurance council advisory that oversees all this, the government of insurance, if you will, 
they're not going to allow that is that's now you're over that schedule credit allotment. So because of that, all work comp carriers, they will not let you cut your commissions on to reduce a premium on the workers' compensation. So that said, when I'm looking at brokers, what can a broker do if price is not a lever to pull to convince me that I should be working with them? What are some of the tools in the bag, the ethical tools in the bag that yep. brokers use that I should be looking for? That's a loaded question. Um, and there's a ton of them, and it depends on a lot of different variables. Some of the big things I think are, um, you know, uh, please, I, I know it's a long video, it's not out yet, but please go watch our work comp video. Um, are they looking at your experience mod? And are they not just looking at your current experience mod? Are they forecasting based on your losses already? What does your mod look like next year? Okay, where is it going? What can we do to help? Because the experience mod is a huge thing uh, that, that you can is somewhat controllable, largely controllable um, when handled properly to reduce those premiums. OK, um, in some states, not all states, in some states, um, OK, if you're maxed out on credits, is there a dividend plan? OK, based on your performance or your losses, is there a dividend return? Uh, that could be applied there to get money back. Um, that's another huge one. Um, and um, let's upfront transparency and honesty is a huge one. Um, listen, it's the lowest price that it can be is, is the person that you're working with being transparent on that and upfront and honest. And if you feel the same, then you're in a good spot. I, I would think, and I don't know if it's even fair to suggest it, but how much work is the broker doing to make my life easier as the purchaser of the insurance? Are they helping to prepare the paperwork? Are they helping me with risk mitigation suggestions? Are they helping me with things that could reduce costs? Can, are they doing all this work? Or are they just sitting back collecting premiums and leaving me on my own? That should be a factor, no? Yep, absolutely. absolutely. White yep. glove service. And I guess with claims management too, right? Yeah, work comp claims get tricky. Um, um, we all have things and we, we do our best to help, but there's, um, with the work, again, watch the work comp video. I don't mean to be so repetitive on that, but you know, we're not attorneys, right? We, there's certain things that your broker can and can't do on a claim, uh, but they are your advocate. And as long as they're showing that they're sitting on your side of the table and doing everything on within their power to help you with claims, um, that's the key, right? We keep jumping over a slide. What's that yes. middle slide? Yes. You know, this is very wordy. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got that this one. Is, this is my doing, by the way. Yeah, I just yeah, and, more, and analytics. more analytical. Andrew's the analytical guy, and I'm the talker. Um, obviously, uh, you can tell. Have we covered this stuff? We've covered this stuff. Um, as an example, if underwriters... Again, who are underwriters? They're, they're the people at the insurance company that are going to analyze the data and give you a quote, right? If an underwriter sees an account is being shopped throughout the insurance marketplace by multiple insurance brokers, they feel the chances of obtaining the businesses are slim. As a result, they have little motivation to give that account their best effort. Yep. Okay. I, underwriters are people too. Yes, the insurance companies want to make money, but the underwriters aren't the one making all the money. The underwriters are a delicate bunch, and, and there are people too, and they have metrics that their bosses want them to hit and win accounts. So yes, when, when this is going on, underwriters are like, I've got other, they've got a whole stack of other submissions on their desk to work on. And when they know that this is going on, that's why some of them, they just, they just flat out decline. Uh, you know what? I'm out. We're just going to decline this year. And a lot of insurance, they don't understand that part, John, right? And so, again, we're not saying don't ever talk to another broker. We're just saying don't make it the Wild West because you're only hurting yourself and your current relationship with your current broker. Well, to your example, when we started, though, we're all trained these days to go to websites where you answer 12 questions, yeah. they send it to 14 companies who have computerized underwriting, and they come back with a quote instantly and nobody cares. Yep. 
right? Yep. But that's not how it works in this business. Not in this business. Okay. We'll see what the future brings on that, but I don't, we don't see it. People much smarter than me uh, don't see it changing. Fair you enough. So many variables as an employer with work comp insurance specifically, there's so many variables there and things that go on um, that, you know, with potential claims, with existing claims, with past claims, with experienced mods, with years in business, with experience, with geographical area. You know, um, I'm, I live in Minnesota. And we get slip and falls up here, you know, like crazy in the wintertime. And you don't see that in Southern states as much, you know? And so there's different, you know, underwriters have different appetites and, and things going on there. Now it's very possible, correct or not, that you get your liability, your NTL, your physical damage and your work comp from four different carriers. Two, two different carriers. Two, maybe. Three okay. Common. Yep. Would it be, possible I, I won't ask you whether it's common or not that oh that person gets me my workers that broker gets me my workers comp and this other broker gets me my other three it's very possible okay so you don't have to get everything from a broker if you, you don't, don't want to no no there's some headaches with that that the uh, insured should really consider sure. ease, of doing, ease of doing business and wait who do i call for this claim is it Com broker A or broker B and you know sort of some of that stuff too. But yes, it's I have accounts. I have actually had many accounts where I only write the work time. Somebody else does the auto um, or vice versa. Okay. Um, yeah. Might be a strategy for really experiencing two brokers and seeing who you like. Yeah. Um again though, I'll say on that in defense of not just us, but every other broker is you know the claims. Um the, the the pain in claims is very different on auto versus work comp. Um, but yes, that's to, to an extent, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, if you look at, um, John, before I started working with FedEx contractors, um, I did a lot of, you know, I was an elephant hunter and I wrote a lot of Fortune 100 companies. Okay. And, you know, 10,000 plus employees, you know, that kind of thing, manufacturing, uh, construction, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. When you go to any Fortune 100 or even heck, a Fortune 500 company, they don't shop their insurance this way. They all shop it this way. Right. So if a Fortune 100 or a Fortune 500 company shops their insurance this way, there's no just because you're a small business. There's no, you can reap the same rewards on getting the best price that a Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 company does by just practicing. It's the same method, right? It's the same thing. It's no different. You're just at a smaller scale. Uh, to, All those companies to reinforce that, I went to a meeting last year for a different fleet, not allowed to say who, um, and they took us out for golf. And one of the people in my group, this was a 6,000 truck fleet. He was their broker. Yeah. One broker. And I thought, that's nuts. Why wouldn't they spread? Nope. Now I understand it. Yeah. You, you find your trusted partner, no different than how did you, how did you pick your tax account? How did you pick your, your business attorney? Right. Um, how did you pick your partner? You know, that your partner in the business with, right. You, you don't shop, you don't shop those things. And again, I, I hate the word shop. You know, um, I'll get alternative quotes or interview an alternative broker and what do they come back with versus their services is maybe a better word. Um, and I do want to touch on one more. I can see you want to question, John, but one other thing. And 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 when we spoke at the Lion Hall Summit, um, I'm a, I don't mean to keep picking, sorry, Paradiso. Um, I'm, I keep picking on CAA, but. I love um, Paradiso too, for the yeah, record. Um, love Brian. Um, David, uh, David Campbell from CIA was in the room. And I said, I asked him in front of everybody that was in the room that we're speaking in front of. And I said, David, if an insured calls you and, or I should say a prospect, if a prospective client calls you and they want to get a quote from you and they tell you that they've got four other brokers quoting as well, what is your response? And he said, and I, I'm very comfortable saying this because I know he would still say it and agree with me. And I say the same thing. 
Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that you reached out, but we're going to pass this year. Uh, there's just too many other brokers involved. And that happens a lot. And the example I gave earlier where we only have the one market, that's a conversation that I've, I've had with that insured too and say, look, I, I appreciate that you reached out. I'm flattered you want to get a quote from us, but we have no leverage. We only have one market. There's too many other brokers involved. We, yes, I could probably get a quote for you, but I know that that quote's not going to be the best that it could be. And so, respectively, um, we're just past. Well, I, I want to build on something you said. You used the word partner, and I've heard Dave Tomash use that often. I've heard other really, really successful TSPs use it. And I think that insurance is such a critical part of risk management for any TSP's business that they need to approach it not just from finding a broker, but finding an insurance partner. Yeah. They need to think of it that way. Yeah. And you, you wouldn't be in business with someone and go shop your partners annually. Um, if you have good reason to change partners, you would. Um, but you also need to figure out who you want to partner with very carefully up front. I think the same thing holds for recruiting and for equipment and for other things you need in any business. You need to find trusted partners because otherwise you're creating unnecessary friction in your business that you don't need. It's hard enough to be successful doing what you need to do. But if you're creating lots of unnecessary friction, that's probably not an optimal way to do things. Andrew, do you have those rates pulled up? Yeah, it's going to stop your screen share here. I'll just stop it. Okay. Uh, I John, this is, I think this is a, a very important point. So what are we looking at here, Andrew? So this is, this is um, Texas, just for reference. Um, but we have it, obviously, you can see down here um, for every state. And so this is going to give us the, the market range for carrier selection. So every year, the, the state rate is published. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And so 7219 is um, TSPs. And so this is the state's mandated rate. And then every insurance carrier has the ability to put their loss cost multiplier onto that rate. So that's all of these individuals here. And then that gives them their base rate for pricing. So you can see like it ranges from 280 here in Texas or in Texas from 287 to 756 based on carriers, right? So there's a huge, huge spectrum for pricing. And so a lot of times what we like to do is make sure that we have one of the top three carriers involved in our quoting process, one in the middle and one a, one a little bit in the higher end, right? Just because this carrier might not be able to give as much schedule credit as as this one right here. And even though it's 428 base rate, it can still get below where one of these top carriers can get to. Okay. So so the, the green to red is an, an indication of the carrier's loss history and what they're allowed to try to recoup off the state baseline to make up for that. Yeah. So that that's their that's their base level. So so they can just deviate on this rate here. The state sets the floor. The, the state, the state sets to. the floor. They add their loss cost in there, which gives their base rate. And then they can fluctuate. They can go debit, which is higher than, than that, or lower than that credit based on the risk. And sometimes, like you'll have a really bad risk, but they're willing to put them in the top tier, but they still need to make enough premium to justify to their book. Okay. Um, and sometimes, sometimes we see the best company give the best possible rate. There's sometimes where, to give you an example, in Texas, you can you can take this rate and and drop it. Here in Minnesota, you can go to fifty percent or forty percent schedule credit. So you'll see the top carrier can still get down to forty percent. That's their fluctuation between the two, either credit at forty percent or debit at forty percent. And sometimes they are willing to get there. If it's the right risk and the right company, they'll, we have we have companies out there that do a dollar sixty two in, in Texas. It's possible that the top of the list could have a horrible year next year and their loss cost grows goes up and they're down in the yellows the year after. Correct. 
it's possible that that doesn't fluctuate greatly. Um, the, the, these top carriers you see in the darker green are also extremely selective on who they take on, right? They're not going to take on as many people that are newer in business or have had, um, they're not afraid of big losses, but they're probably not going to take on a TSP that has a frequency issue, a whole bunch of claims all the time every year. Um, that typically, those carriers are going to be much more selective on who um, they're going to be willing to even have on their books. And so um, that's where it's a case where a TSP comes to you and they have a, just an absurd long list of workers' comp claims. You're like, we're not even going to try for that one because we know. I, I know. I know. Yeah. Before, I don't even need to send it to them. I know they're going to decline it. Okay. So again, really that, goes, that goes back to, you know, talking and understanding with your broker. Um, this is what we mean by leverage, right? So let me just pick on, okay, employers and then um, ICW. Um, what's the rate difference there, Andrew? I can't move the clicker. ICW is 428 versus employers at 287. I have many accounts in Texas that are with ICW and ICW kicked employers' butt because we were able to leverage and even though the rate's higher, we were able to get the schedule credits that Andrew was talking about, right? Whereas conversely, think about it. Think if we were, think if you just were, did the Wild West insurance shopping and the only one I had was employers. Yeah, they got the best rate, but you took away all my leverage. And, and now, right, you're going to go with a carrier that has a higher rate, but they have more scheduled credit. So you see, kind of see how that gets. Yeah. In it. No, yeah. I get it. You sold me on that. Yeah. And they're going to give you a first quote and then you're going to play them off against each other. And yeah, if you and don't thing, play off. Thing, yeah. The other thing we wanted to show by showing this is, look, we're not the, Andrew and I are not the only people that know this. All the other brokers have these numbers and so do the insurance companies, right? So it's, everybody, you know, we kind of all know what we're up against here. This isn't a big secret, right, in, in the insurance world. All the brokers know this and the insurance companies know this. Got it. Go ahead, Andrew. No, I was, again, it's much like he said, like all this, all this information is public. So you just have to know where to look for it and we can find it out. And I, we just do it like this so that we can have, have it annualized. And every year we know, hey, listen, base rates, like to give you an example in Georgia, in Georgia, they just took a huge base, base rate reduction. So the state, the state filed a new rate for 2023 and it's a dollar less than it was a year prior. So, you know, like, Obviously, it's it's different price, but if you think about it, like this is the base rate that started like this, and now it just dropped a dollar. So we know, hey, listen, if you're if you're not taking a massive decrease on your work comp, then you you probably should be shopping. Like if you just got your renewal and you're 30 days out, and you say, man, my my rate didn't change year over year in Georgia right now. You're lo you're leaving money on the table because some somebody's doing something. Gotcha. Well, guys, we had planned to do a shorter video. Yep. I know we went long again. <laughs> I want to thank you both for providing a phenomenal education here for everybody watching. This is really powerful stuff. This is a big place where contractors can look to try to manage expense and also make sure that they have proper risk coverage for things. And you've done done a real solid to the entire TSP community for making this easy to understand. I know it was not five minute easy, um, but I hope everybody watching appreciates the value that the two of you have provided to them by, by taking your time to make this presentation again after doing it in Dallas. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Happy Thanks to help. for having us. Yeah. Anything yep. we can do to help. We will, of course, provide your contact info. If folks have other questions, we'd love for them to reach out. Um, we'll do that in the, the comments and everything under the video. Um, Joe or Andrew, anything else we need to touch on before we sign off? I think that's it. I know it's, it's um, you know, for a lot of people, it's going to be because it's so against the grain of what we've been taught of how to do um, is I just encourage everybody, you know what? Or you just rush and just flood the market. But call your broker and talk to your broker about 
the markets and what they're thinking. Let your your brokers the one like we just showed you on the rates, John. Let let your broker tell you what's going on. We know we know what the rates are doing. We know what carriers where they're going and. Um, again, there are a lot of variables with it based on each account and your history and your experience model and all that that affect, you know, that and, and the insurance company's response based on that. But talk to your broker first, please. Um, and like I said, hey, if you fully trust in your current broker and you're liking, then stay there. Then stay with him or her and let them just do their do their work. Good stuff. Joe Bowler, Andrew Martens, Assured Partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um I suspect we're going to do some more videos. I have a feeling we'll have some more topics to cover. So I look forward to that. Absolutely. Be happy to, as long as everybody can continue to put up with my Minnesota accent and um, I'm happy to do it. So. All right. Thanks y'all. Appreciate right. Thanks, you John. being here. Yep. Anytime.